These are chromosomes, rod-shaped structures found in the cells of all living things. In 1902, an American graduate student named Walter Sutton made an interesting discovery. While studying grasshoppers, he noticed that each body cell had 24 chromosomes arranged in 12 pairs. However, each sex cell, a sperm or egg cell, contained only 12 chromosomes, half the number found in body cells. When a male sex cell joined with a female sex cell, the resulting fertilized egg had 24 chromosomes arranged in 12 pairs, exactly the same as its parents. Sutton concluded that chromosomes carry genes from one generation to the next. His conclusions are the basis for the chromosome theory, that genes are carried from parents to their offspring on chromosomes. But how did the sex cells of grasshoppers get just 12 chromosomes? The process that Sutton observed in the sex cells of grasshoppers is called meiosis. Meiosis is a reduction division that produces the sex cells and cuts the number of chromosomes in half. Let's take a closer look at meiosis using, for simplicity, parent cells with four chromosomes. The first thing that happens during meiosis is that the chromosomes in a cell double or replicate. At this stage, chromosomes can exchange genes in a process called crossing over. Crossing over produces new combinations of genes and increases genetic diversity. Next, the cell divides, with the chromosome pairs separating equally and segregating independently to produce two cells. Now, each of the two cells has half the number of chromosomes as the original cell, but each chromosome has already doubled. Next, these two cells divide to produce a total of four cells, each having just half the chromosomes of the original parent cell. In the male organism, these four cells become sperm cells. In the female, the division is unequal, resulting in one egg cell and three polar bodies. Only the single egg cell survives. A few years after Sutton's work with grasshoppers, an American zoologist by the name of Thomas Hunt Morgan discovered something strange while studying fruit flies, those tiny little bugs that hover over fruit in grocery stores. If you wondered why Mendel studied peas, Morgan's choice must really have you scratching your head. Like Mendel, Morgan had his reasons. Fruit flies are easy to raise. They produce new generations of offspring very quickly, and their body cells have only four pairs of chromosomes, making them easy to study. Besides, they don't eat much. The strange thing that Morgan discovered was that while the chromosomes of each pair were identical in the female fruit fly, the male one pair of chromosomes was not identical. One chromosome of that pair was shaped like a rod, while the other was shaped like a hook. Morgan labeled the rod-shaped chromosome the X chromosome, and the hook-shaped chromosome the Y chromosome. Morgan's experiments led him to the conclusion that the X and Y chromosomes determine the sex of an organism. For this reason, they are known as the sex chromosomes. Which combination of sex chromosomes do you have? Here's how it works. In males, meiosis results in sperm cells that have either an X or a Y chromosome. In females, meiosis results in an egg cell with a single X chromosome. If that egg cell is fertilized by a sperm cell with an X chromosome, the offspring will be a female. If the egg is fertilized by a sperm cell with a Y chromosome, the offspring will be a male. So the next time you see one of those cuddly little critters hovering over your banana, remember the important role its ancestors played in our understanding of the sex chromosomes.